and people do not understand the meaning of backbiting because when you say my brother my sister do not talk about this person bad because they are not here they will tell you but what I am saying is true that shows the height of ignorance because the messenger peace be upon him has explained very clearly that when you are speaking the truth about someone else in their absence in a way that they would not like it if they were present that is known as backbiting so to speak a lie is actually worse so if you want to know what is backbiting brothers and sisters it is to speak the truth about someone in their absence in a way that if they were there they would not like it may the almighty forgive us all i would like to think that perhaps the bulk of us perhaps myself included sometimes we need to raise the awareness within ourselves of these type of words and statements may the almighty forgive us and for your information when you backbite my brothers and sisters immediately your salah is given away your zakah is given away your good deeds given away you might be the most pious person externally but because you have harmed someone through backbiting alone or spreading rumor about them or slandering slandering would mean al buhtan to create a lie about them you would have given away your charities and this is why it's important for us to know that the almighty has warned us through the lips of the messenger peace be upon him regarding every single way that the devil comes to us in order to snatch our deeds away do not let your deeds be snatched if you would hold a piece of gold you would make sure you hold fast upon it if you were to travel to a country where they told you be careful of the handbag snatchers perhaps you will make sure your handbag is well tucked in in a way that it nobody would snatch it why are our deeds exposed and we are allowing everyone to snatch our deeds in a way that on the day of judgment when we get there this hadith continues it says so this man's good deeds go to the other and the, the, the rest of the good deeds go to all those whom he has oppressed in any way until he is left with no good deeds but does it stop there the answer is no so this pious man whom we all thought was so religious is now strapped of all or should i say stripped of all his good deeds because he has oppressed so many people and then what happens there are still a line of people who are waiting for justice because he has oppressed even more by eating their wealth by harming them by spreading rumor about them by doing whatever it is in terms of usurping their rights in the world so now the bad deeds of those who are waiting the bad deeds of the oppressed will now go on to the record of this man who owes them because of oppression so perhaps an adultery might go into his account perhaps another sin may go into his account perhaps the missing of a prayer might go into his account until he is taken and thrown and cast into hellfire may the almighty safeguard us today we spoil our good deeds with one sms with one email with one phone call we spoil our good deeds brother you have your salah protect it protect it very dearly and this is why in the quran allah says Man whoever comes with a good deed shall have his good deed multiplied tenfold the reasons some of the mufassirin make mention of the fact that to protect a good deed is 10 times more difficult than to engage in it so if you engage in a good deed mashallah you deserve a good deed and you deserve the multiplication if you bring it with you on the day of judgment us to ensure that we need to know the devil's plan the plan of the devil from the very beginning was to waste our time in existence here in this world and the devil shaitan iblis the accursed has promised the almighty from the very beginning that i will wait in ambush for mankind to his left and right in front of him and behind him in order to ensure that he is an ungrateful person who will not worship you but he will worship everything besides you is to know is how does the devil come to us what is his plan if we don't know the plan of the devil we will definitely fall into his trap sometimes when a person engages in a good deed and in his heart he would like to show off he would like to show someone it is known as a riya this type of show actually negates the good deed and results in the dropping or eradication 
of the reward of that particular good deed because we are showing. It happens sometimes even in prayer where a person is rushing in prayer and when another one happens to pass them, they quickly make their prayer slightly slower or the posture slightly better. That is known as association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith of the bankrupt person where the messenger peace be upon him asks and I'm sure we've repeated this many times. Atadruna man il muflis? Do you know who is the one who is a bankrupt person? And the companions respond saying he is one who does not have any gold or silver. In our terms, one with no cash. He's a cashless person. And perhaps he owes people so much. So the messenger says, no, a true bankrupt person is he who comes on the day of judgment with a lot of good deeds next to his name. A lot of good deeds. For example, he would have salah. He would have lots of salah. Perhaps he might have salah in the masjid with jama'ah in the first line. And perhaps he might not have missed his tilawa or recitation of the Quran. Perhaps he might have engaged in lots of remembrance of Allah. Perhaps he might have given out lots of charities. Perhaps he might have gone for Hajj and he might have fasted in the month of Ramadan. And he might have engaged in the voluntary fast. Now these are all signs of what we would term a pious person. Today, my beloved brothers and sisters, piety has become an item and an issue that people gauge by looking at the outward appearance of an individual, not realizing that the true root of piety is the heart. It begins to show outwardly, correct, but not necessarily everyone who looks outwardly pious is actually internally pious. And not everyone who looks outwardly impious would be internally in the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the rectification of both the internal as well as the external. So there would be people who have come with lots of good deeds, many good deeds. But Ya'ti, when he comes, he would have slandered this one. He would have backbitten this one. He would have usurped the wealth of this one. He would have wronged this one. He would have sworn the other. Shatam hadha. Shatam means one who abuses verbally the others. Today we abuse those who work for us. We abuse our colleagues. We abuse our children. We abuse our spouses. We abuse our parents verbally. How dare we do that when we are looking forward for the day we meet our maker? How do you think it would be when we present our swear words in front of the Almighty and say, Ya Allah, when I was in the world, you gave me one chance and here you are. Ya Allah, these are the words I used to use. A'udhu Billah. May the Almighty protect us from the devil. So, the, so brothers and sisters, the same applies to wealth and sustenance. If we are to achieve wealth and sustenance through the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is ingratitude, which we will get to in a few moments. But if we are to sell our faith in order to achieve that which is material, perhaps we may be associating wealth as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'isa abdu dirham, ta'isa abdu dinar, ta'isa wa takasa wa idha shika falan takash. Amazingly, we talk of destruction for the one, the one who worships the dirham and the dinar, the one who worships gold and silver. They are definitely at great loss and they are definitely people who are at such a loss that even if they were pricked, they would not be able to help themselves remove that particular thorn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This is why we see sometimes people may be granted lots of wealth, but they still cannot help themselves in terms of health. Sometimes no matter how much wealth you have, it does not bring about sleep because the Almighty is the owner of the wealth and the sleep. Sometimes the Almighty wants to make it clear to us that he is the owner of health as well as wealth, as well as sustenance in terms of blessing because some people's blessings are snatched away because of their evil deeds. May the Almighty grant us goodness. Have you seen sometimes in our homes, the Quran has a special place. But it is there, we respect it outwardly alone. We see people putting the Quran on their heads, but do they follow it? That is the question. True respect of the Quran and the Sunnah is when you follow the Quran and the Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Brothers and sisters, enough hypocrisy from myself and yourselves of looking at the words. As soon as we see a verse on the floor, we pick it up. Yes, that was a good deed. You picked up the verse because it was dropped on the floor, perhaps in a public place. 
But did you follow that word? Maybe Allah wanted you to pick the word up as an evidence against you. It told you how to dress. It told you how to fulfill your salah. It told you what type of wealth to eat. It told you what to abstain from. It told you to abstain from adultery. We lifted the word. We put it up in a proper niche in the right place. But we never ever adopted it. Is that respect? Is this what we want? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who spoil our deeds. When we speak of spoiling our deeds is the issue of ingratitude. When we show ungratefulness to the Almighty, the term used is al-kufr. And kufr, as you know, also refers to disbelief. Because when you have shown ingratitude, you have actually disbelieved in the gifts of the Almighty. And this is why Allah says, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فَقَدْ حَبِطَ عَمَلُهُ Whosoever disbelieves in belief, whoever disbelieves in faith, has definitely spoiled their deeds. If you take a look at those who don't have belief, those who don't believe in the first place, Allah speaks about them. He says, وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا we have indeed granted them their deeds in advance. So whilst they were in this world, because they were disbelievers, they might have been charitable, they might have been people who did lots of good deeds, so to speak, but because they disbelieved, we gave them their due whilst they were in the world, in a way that when they got to the life after death, these deeds were all strewn all over and they were of no benefit to them. So this is why you find sometimes the disbelievers are enjoying this world, they have good health, they have lots of wealth, perhaps they have children who are obedient to them, perhaps they have conditions of non-suffering, but that is all sometimes just a payment for maybe a little bit of charitable deed that they may have engaged in. May the Almighty make us from those who appreciate the fact that we have belief and we are from amongst the Muslimin, we are from amongst the submitters and may He make us submit.